Ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, welcome back to the over-analysis of Alum. Picking up where we left off, the majority of the Rogations are now dead, but it's cool, they prayed, they rubbed some dirt in their emotional wounds, and now the Rogations are going to help Alum get back into the city through some physics-defined means that, well, let's just watch. At this point in the game, I'm thoroughly convinced that these robots have some form of sentience. Otherwise, why are they complain about Nightwatch? Well, I guess they have no souls, so the altruist is okay with them being destroyed. And once again, Alum proves to have legs of steel. So, there's not much to really do here. You just go speak to Esther, and you can give your rushlight to that guy that Alum doesn't like for some reason that's never fully explained. Maybe it's just a vain attempt to give Alum a personality. What's this? It's, um, just drink it. So, here's another problem with Alum. There's no real internal consistency with a lot of stuff. Important stuff, like for instance, this Rushlight thing. Earlier on, the game specified you had to drink it willingly, knowingly, blah blah blah. It's an allegory for baptism. But now, Alum just gives it to Podge, and Podge just drinks it because Alum's like, Yeah, drink it, dude. And now, Podge is cured from the vague, and now has a voice talking to him. And none of this seems weird to him. And moreover, isn't Podge now a code red citizen? I mean, Alum just met with the Rogations. Podge drank the friggin' rushlight in the middle of the city. Wouldn't Satan, like, catch on? And now, doesn't Podge have a rushlight of his own that would be really noticeable? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's being overlooked. But what shouldn't be overlooked is that this game likes to repeat its puzzles. Basically, to meet with Esther, you more or less do the same thing you had to do to get the extra coin earlier on in the game. Because creative puzzle solving, ah, whatever. We get to meet Esther for like the second or third time now. Esther. Where have you been? I found it. I found the cure, Esther. We can share it with all of Cosmos. Alan, please, listen to me. You can talk? Alum, Mr. Glim told me you might say some weird things about a light. Mr. Glim? Yes. He's a good man. He wants to help us. Don't tell me you really believe that. Come on, Esther. We need to get out of here. Please, Alum, don't run. I know you're confused. Esther, what are they filling your head with? <laughs> no, don't shoot him! Hello, Alum. Mr. Glim, why are you doing this? Mr. Glim is not a very well thought out villain, now that I think about it. You see, earlier on in the game, Mr. Glim shoots at Alum, tries to kill Alum because he meets with the Rogations. He captures the Rogation leader, throws him in prison, instead of just executing him on sight. Because it seems like Mr. Glim has no problem killing his own citizens, but a terrorist, he puts in prison... And then he says, hey, I'm going to kill him and ex... Why doesn't he just shoot people? This is the one thing I hate about villains. You know, you have a really weak villain. When your villain can just shoot a character, and then all the villain's problems are solved for the most part. Why doesn't he do it? Just pull the damn trigger, Mr. Glim. I have the cure for the vague. We can give it to everyone in Cosmos. Hello. You've been deceived. I still find it really weird how everyone reacts to Alum in this game. Seriously, he's a delivery boy. He's like Fry from Futurama. But yet, everyone treats him like he's the second coming of Saint Awesome or something. Why do people care so much about Alum? He's insignificant. He's meaningless. He has no special powers, abilities, or connections. He's just a package delivery boy. Will you give me your rushlight and put this whole thing behind you? 
Of course I chose to have Alum hand over the rushlight. After all, all he wants is to be with Esther. To cure her from the vague, but even then it's not really certain if she has a vague anyway. So yeah, why wouldn't I give the rushlight over to Mr. Glenn? Oh, right, the end, happily ever after. Alum's now with Esther again. Yay! Oh, no, of course, that wasn't the real ending. No, 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 you say no, and then you go through the chase. It's pretty much the exact same thing that happened in the very beginning of the game. So, yeah. Instead of running up, you run down. Instead of getting a package, you get a bit of robot armor that was from a robot that Mr. Glenn killed. And I guess everything's stupid because they can't see it's clearly just a dude with a robot corpse on him. It, it doesn't really matter. Alan makes it to the sewer and flees. This wasn't supposed to happen. I wanted Esther to drink my rushlight. Man, Alan is very self-centered. All about him. Where well, all my friends, they lost their loved ones because of Mr. Glim and Satan. But where well, my wife who's still alive, she won't drink my rushlight. Come on, God, get your act together. Think about me and what I feel. I'm so important. My name's Alan. Fuck you, Alan. There, I said it. I do not like this character. You've done enough to show Esther my heart. I want you to trust me for her life. God damn it, God. Why do you always gotta be so friggin' vague about stuff? Oh, you've done enough. You showed her my heart. What the fuck does that even mean? I have something else that I want you to focus on. What is it? There is a pass between inner tide and outer tide. I want you to find the rogations and bring them there. I will show all of you who I am in a deeper light. Now that deeper light stuff sounds a bit homoerotic, but that just me, dirty mom, blah blah blah. But God, I mean altruist, sorry. Mr. Altruist, why don't you just tell the rogations to begin with? Why you like Alum so much? Do you think he's cute or something? Unfeigned. What about Esther? Alum seems to have completely forgot the magnitude of the situation that he is in. Children got blown up. Seriously, children and old people died in this game because they were on the side of the altruist. For real. Do, did everyone forget it? The game seems to certainly forget it. But seriously, this is some heavy shit that's going on here. And all Elm can endlessly go on and on about is Esther this, Esther that, Esther, 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 Esther. Esther. Whew, sorry, I had to get that off my chest, but come on. People have been martyred for this cause, and the game, and Alum, and even the altruists, they don't seem to care. It's like, the tone of this game is bizarre. And what's also bizarre is, you gotta talk to this rat man, and get him some cheese, because he knows how to get back into the city, because believe it or not, Alum's still obsessed with Esther, and he wants to go back in the city and save Esther again, because, you know, it's worked out so well so far for him. <sighs> Whatever, it doesn't really matter. What matters is, we outside now. Hey, we're in front of Slip Town, and there's Ebots here too. Then, again, they have terrible sight. <sighs> this universe is so damn believable, isn't it? Hey, isn't that Joe Lama Yorkshire the third from Cosmos? What's he doing here? Need I remind you that earlier on in the game, it was stated that the people of Cosmos believe they're the only people on Earth. That the wasteland's unlivable, no one can survive, there's lurids, it's cold, it's basically a hellscape. But now nah, here's a guy from Cosmos. Oh, of course, the game explains that he got paid a lot of money so he wouldn't talk because, you know, people don't get drunk ever, people just don't talk to talk. Oh my god. Whatever. You know what we do? You know what we do to this poor guy who's sad about life and stuff? Maybe life bringing him down? We give him the damn rush light. He drinks it, and all of a sudden, his personality completely changes. I'm overthinking it. What matters now is that we can go into town after we do some mild puzzle solving, which is basically navigate the sewers. There's even a friggin' map above where you need to go into the sewers because, well, I guess I couldn't think up of a nice puzzle besides follow these directions we conveniently placed on top of the place you need to go to anyway. The 
never find the way to Glimmer Glim's factory without me. Rufus. Yeah, Rufus does carry on the proud tradition of every character having a kind of a weird and slightly annoying voice. But nevertheless, we can now make it into Slip Town. And wouldn't you know it? Wouldn't you know it? There's some Satanists here. They're doing some evil stuff because that's all Satanists are apparently capable of is being evil. I know it was you, freaks. Give me back my kid. I assure you, Mr. Hammo, we have nothing to do with the disappearance of your child. I swear, if you hurt my boy... I understand that you're angry. If you Chagrins have my kid... Uh... My master cares so much that he gave me permission to speak in common tongue to you. Your master? Where is he? I need a word. I am here on his behalf. Whatever. I don't trust you Chagrins. Sneaking around, speaking gibberish. Leave us common folk alone. Mr. Glim's e-bots are here to protect us. We don't need you. Just let me know if the Chagrin can help you in any way. Get out of my sight! You know, at first I thought these Chargons were like the Rogations, just by a different name, but now they evil. It's not really explained until much later when you see what they do, but we'll get to that. But what we'll also get to is what you have to do here. Basically, Mr. Ammo Kid is missing, so he won't give you no damn cheese until you find his kid. So now you have the quest to find Mr. Ammo's kid. And to do that, you have to do a lot of backtracking, folks. Ooh, a lot of backtracking. But first things first, you gotta meet up with the Rogations again, who... Keep enough with their proud tradition of doing nothing, are proudly doing nothing except moping about and feeling sad because this painter's wife, who is blind, because God likes to fuck around with people like that, is sick. And no one going to do nothing about it except be sad, because these are not proactive people at all. We've been over it, folks. So yeah, you gotta cure the blind lady, you gotta find a kid, and everything obviously intersects and overlaps, and you end up going to the same places and discovering items you need to help both of your quests. So it's pretty damn obvious that the Jargons have the damn kid, but you can't understand what the Jargons are saying, because they speak gibberish because Satan doesn't believe in effective communication to get more people on his side. He needs a better PR team. So whatever, you have to go back to the crazy dude you first met, and oh my god, remember that spring? That spring cures everything, so you fill up a jug, and now you have some magical water that will kill people, because none of the other Rogations could have driven over there and gotten the damn thing themselves. No, 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 they too damn lazy. But also, you find out that, oh my god, that little giant tadpole thing, he swallowed this thing that makes you understand foreign languages. <laughs> so we gotta fish it out, and yeah, now we have all the items we need to cure the blind lady and to find the kid. That's it. Invidious Umbra. You're a Chagrin? Yes. I see you have the gift of tongues. Who are you guys? The Invidious Umbra is our master. He helps us and blesses our lives with good things. Good things? Yes, power, money, women, all the things I would never be strong enough to get by myself. Following him and worshiping him is the best thing I ever did. He has great power to help us in all of our needs. What do you do for him? As long as we refuse to drink a rush light, he will serve us. You know, the deal that Nvidia's Umbra is striking with people seems far better than the deal that the Altruist is striking. Although they are similar, but all you need to do is not drink a rust life, and then Nvidia's Umbra will give you money, power, and women? Uh, that sounds fine, I guess. What is the Altruist offering? Oh, if you just blindly listen to him, the vague gets cured. Maybe, if he feels like it. But it doesn't seem like Nvidia's Umbra is asking you to really do much of anything, whereas the Altruist is dragging you clear across the map and not really explaining himself because, you know, he works in mysterious ways and not totally because he's a dick. Hell, the only reason why Alum is even on the side of the Altruist is because the Altruist keeps promising him that he has the cure for the vague, that he can fix Esther. But whatever. We gotta beat up his Satanist and steal his robe. Then we gotta go back in the sewer, find where the base is, and yeah. Then we gotta go in after we learn a dance. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Monkey Island for some reason. But I'm gonna glaze all over that because you don't need to know that. What you do need to know is that we now are gonna save the kid. It's the Umbra showing us a sign. Holy moly. 
boy, oh boy, oh boy. Thank you, Master. We are your humble servants. Come on, kid. Let's get out of here. So everything is fixed. Mr. Ammo has his son back. Although it's not very clear why Mr. Satan needs the son anyway. Maybe he just thinks it's cool to sacrifice children. None of that's explained because it doesn't matter. He evil for evil's sake. But whatever, the Rogation's friend is cured. And also, and most importantly, we have the cheese for the mouse man. Now I know, I know it sounds like I'm overanalyzing the wrong things, that I'm ignoring a lot of the plot and character development, but no, I'm totally not. Mr. Ammo, the Rogation's friends, none of these people matter. They simply exist in the game to give you quests, and then they disappear from the game pretty much as soon as you meet them. So Mr. Ammo and his son, the painter, and his wife, they don't mean nothing. They're d we're done with them, basically. But we're not done with is Mr. Mouse Man, because we give him the cheese. And then he tells us how to get back into the city. And that's exactly what we do. Esther, I'm going to share something with you. I want you to drink it. Esther, please. You must. Alan, thank you for caring so much about me. Just drink it, Esther. I know what the rushlight is. I knew of it before I even stopped talking to you. Maybe I will drink it one day, but I'm fine. Wow, Esther is so mature about this whole situation. It's kind of hard not to root for her. I just can't be with you anymore. I want a new life. More quiet and in control. More fun and out of control. My love for you has faded. I can't force it to be here when it's not. You know, that was very articulate. Esther has made it very clear that she no longer loves Alum, that she wants to move on with her life, that she wants to start a new chapter. It happens. It does. People fall out of love. People drift apart. People change. Emotions change. There's nothing weird or unusual about it. It's not some mysterious disease. It's reality. Esther. Alum, please. No. You have the vague, Esther. You have to see it. Just take my rushlight. You'll see. Alan, please give up. You're only making it worse. Yeah, it's Mr. Glim. He's going to try to kill Alan because it's what he does now, I suppose, with this free time. And again, it's not really clear why Esther is even here. I'm convinced Mr. Glim just wants to hook up with her. That's the only explanation I can think of. But either way, Alan flees to a little drop chamber thing and you have to do a very long, tedious puzzle. Well, it's not really a puzzle. It's just you have to follow a long group of step-by-step -step instructions to launch the little drop pod or whatever it's called. But yeah, it's actually kind of cool to see Mr. Glim's face. He seems like a rather handsome fellow. I guess I can see why Esther would be attracted to him. Power, doesn't look bad. Seems like a nice guy that just wants to kill her husband for probably the same reasons why King David wanted to kill Bashira's husband. And then something interesting happened. you do something? Alum. Why? Do you care? Do you even love her? Can you even do anything at all to help? I know your pain. I cannot bear what is happening to people. Then do something. I died for Esther. Oh my god. Quite literally, oh my god. This is a part of the game that you can tell the writer was really energetic to make a Christian parable. But the problem is, it makes no goddamn sense in this context. Without already knowing the altar is supposed to be Jesus God, this just seems like a very random thing to say. It's like, hey, guys, I stubbed my toe to make this video. You don't love me or her. Why were we born in cosmos? Why is everything a mystery? Come into my world and fight for me. My ways are not your ways, Alan. 
and my thoughts are not your thoughts. Okay, still makes you an asshole though. Those are perfectly legitimate questions to ask, and perfectly fair. Why is everything a mystery? Why don't you reveal yourself? I mean, you're perfectly willing to chat with people and have them floating in space, but to actually do anything, to actually, you know, interact, or do anything meaningful beyond just telling people what to do, seems to be beyond the power of the altruist. The day is coming when I will be there in flesh and blood. But first... The vague will grow increasingly. People will find value and security within the confines of the vague, keeping them from my love. Temporal value, temporal security. I have so much more for them. I will come in the fullness of time. I will come to take every rush light bearer home to be with me. He still seems like a con man. He doesn't explain what this thing is. You just get to hang out with him? How's that so great? Oh, wow, I get to hang out with the altruists. What a great offer. Instead of, you know, having a nice life, enjoying existence, not having to suffer. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, great deal there. I'm not going without Esther. Because unlike you, I love her. I'm not giving up. Of course not. He's obsessed. He's a sick man. I hate you. It's okay now, Alum. I'm here. Who are you? My name is Adelina. I am the head of all the angels. I've seen the purity in your love for Esther and your relentless strength to never stop. Even when the altruists couldn't help, you still loved. You've passed the test. I will be your personal helper from here on out. I can and will help you save Cosmos and get Esther back. You're one of a kind, Alum. Adelina? Are you real? I'm more real than the snow melting down your face. It's useless. Esther doesn't want to be with me. You don't mean that. We can win her heart. I need more time to spend with her. Time heals all wounds. Mr. Glim. That controlling bastard. We will deal with him, Alum. If you can help me. (sighs) I will, Alum. I will. Just come with me.